The first step in this project would be to make an ordering screen that takes the basic details of an order. How many cupcakes they want, what kind of cupcakes they want, and if they have any special customizations. Now, before we get into the UI, we're gonna start by defining our data model. Previously, we were mixing structs and classes to get the right result, but here, we'll have a different solution. We'll have a single class that stores all our data, and they passed from screen to screen in our project. This means all the screens in our app share the same data, which will work really well, as you'll see. For now, this class won't need that many properties. We're gonna have a type of cakes, plus a static array of all possible options. We'll have how many cakes the user wants to order. We'll have whether you want to make special requests, which will show or hide uh, extra options in our UI. We'll have, do they want to have extra frosting on their cakes? And if they want to have extra sprinkles on their cakes, you know, some extra things they can customize uh, based on their desire for the cupcakes. Each of these have to update the UI when they're changed. So we've got to make sure this whole class uses the observable macro. So make a new SIF file, press Command N, choose Swift file, and call this thing order.swift. And then we'll say inside here there is an observable class called order. And inside there, first we'll have our various types of uh, cupcake. I'll say static let types be an array of vanilla and strawberry and chocolate and rainbow. Then we'll have uh, the storage for the current order. We'll say type is zero by default, so vanilla. Then quantity, that'll be three by default, sensible default there, I think. Then var special oops, request enabled is false. And then we'll do extra frosting. Frosting is false. And then add sprinkles is false. And we can now make a basic instance of that in our content view that'll store all the active order. So we're in content view. I'm gonna say here, at state private var order is a new order instance. And that's the only place this order will be created. Every other screen in the app will be passed this property so they all work with the same data, They're all sharing the same information behind the scenes. Now I'm gonna start building out the data, uh, the UI for the screen in three sections with a cupcake type and quantity coming first. Now this will have a little picker showing users the options of vanilla, uh, chocolate, strawberry, and, and uh, rainbow. And then a step over the range three through 20 to choose an amount and all that wrapped out of form with a navigation stack so we can set a title. So that all sounds easy, but a small speed bump. Uh, I have deliberately here made our cupcake topping list an array of strings. I'm storing the actual selection as an integer, zero. And this is intentional to try and show you more variety here. Um, we'll try and match the two somehow. And one solution is to use the indices property of an array, which gives the position of each item inside there that we could use as an array index. This is a bad idea for mutable arrays because the order of array can change at any time. But here, the array is constant. It won't ever change, so it's quite safe. So back in our content view, I'm gonna say we have uh, in our body a navigation stack with a form inside, and then our first section. We'll do a section with a picker select your, select even, your cake type. With selection bound to dollar order dot type. Now inside the picker, that's where our for each comes. I'm gonna do a for each of our order, capital O, dot types, dot indices. Loop over all the indices, zero, one, two, three in our case. And then inside there, make a text of the order, dot types at that index. So zero, one, two, and three. And you can see already, boom, this pops up nicely like that. Now you can see it's saying, wait a minute, you've got an, a non-constant integer range here. Swift UI is worried. It's worried this might change over time. Now we know it's constant. Swift UI does not. And so it's saying to us, 
this looks like it might change. Be careful what you want to do. And the solution is just to say, use the ID of backslash self, the promise that is safe IDs to use, and that will clear the warning up nicely. After the picker is our stepper. We'll say uh, number of cakes and write our order quantity here. And the value for that we bound to dollar order quantity in the range, like I said, of three through 20. Enough cupcakes for anyone, surely. And finally, add a title to our form here, navigation title of cupcake corner. Okay, looking nice already. The second section of our form will hold three toggle switches bound to special request enabled, extra frosting, and add sprinkles respectively. However, the second and third of those extra frosting add sprinkles should only be visible when the first one, the special request option, is enabled. We'll wrap those in a condition. So we'll say there's a second section here with uh, a toggle inside saying any special requests like that. Is on is bound to dollar order special request enabled dot animation to animate the change smoothly if possible. And now inside there, I'll say, if our order does have special requests enabled, then we'll do a toggle for add extra frosting for our, I can't spell frosting for some reason, frosting uh, is on bound to dollar order dot extra frosting. And then below that will be toggle add extra sprinkles. With is on bound to dollar order dot add sprinkles. And, I'm going to go ahead and try it out. Press just command R and run the app back, see what you think. Um, all being well, you can see I have just vanilla here nicely. Where's the rest of my form? Nothing at all. Cool. Uh, it seems to have lost the plot slightly. Try again. Press command R again. No, I get one option. Cool. <laughs> Why do I get one option? SwiftUI. Let's find out. I'll just delete the app. Just in case SwiftUI is playing around, let's find out. Remove the app. Delete the app. Yeah, delete the app. Go on. It's fine in the preview. But nope, the main app only has one option available to me. And the preview has all of them. Cool. Let's remove this condition just in case it's lost the plot slightly. Now they all appear. And now conditioning again. What's it going to do? Now it works great. Sometimes Xcode and uh, the uh, simulator can be a little bit interesting, folks. But don't worry. It's, it's not a problem. It's just a, a weird glitch in the system for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Relax. You see now it's fixed. Just noodle around until it finally figures itself out. Anyway, as you can see, it should work correctly eventually. I can choose my cupcake type, strawberry, whatever, rainbow. Uh, choose lots of cakes. I'm a very, very portly gentleman. And when I enable this box, these things slide in. Now they're not animating, which is not ideal. Uh, that's SwiftUI being a bit poor, I think. It should animate, really. It is not, there you go. Um, but it is at least working correctly, so I can go through and enable and disable these things nicely. However, there is a bug, and this is an actual bug of ours, not a, a SwiftUI bug for a change. Um, and it's one of our making, more importantly. If we do what I just did there, we enabled special requests, then enabled frosting and sprinkles, then disabled special requests. Now, what's happened behind the scenes is our two special request booleans are still set to true, which is why if I re-enable the checkbox, boom, they come to being true straight away. Now, this kind of problem isn't hard to work around if you're the, the, the all the various layers of your code knows about this. If you're server, your database, your app editor are all programmed. Ignore extra frosting, ignore extra sprinkles. If special request is false, then you're fine. However, a better idea, and certainly a safer idea is to say, actually, when we disable special requests, also automatically disable these two here. We set them back to default values. We can do that in our class over here. We can add a property observer to special request enabled here. We can say that when it's changed with did set, uh, we're going to say if the value is now false, then extra frosting is false. 
and add sprinkles is false like that. Uh, I'll press Command R, wondering if it'll run the new version or the old version. Let's find out. <laughs> I'm gonna enable the box, and enable that, enable that, and then disable this, and re-enable it. Okay, so it's sort of having a go. Didn't look great. Maybe that's it trying to animate the change, perhaps. Maybe animation is getting actually a worse result than not trying to animate changes. Let's try again with animation turned off. Uh, again, enable, 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 disable, enable. Oh no, it's just not great. <laughs> this is a, a great video, folks, for, for battling with SwiftUI. Anyway, that's the first two sections done uh, with some live debugging along the way. Uh, our third section is the easiest because this is going to be just a navigation link pointing to the next screen in our flow. Now, we haven't got a second screen just yet, but we can add it quickly just to do a little placeholder. Um, press Command N on your keyboard, choose Swift UI view, and call this thing address view, like that. I want to give this thing an order property so it has an, an a object can watch with data inside. So I'll say var order is an order like that. And then in its body, we've got uh, hello world. Honestly, that's perfectly fine for now. We don't need anything good in there. Um, you will need to pass a value in here though. So I'd say order is just an empty order for previewing purposes. We're gonna make that more useful shortly, but for now, it means we can return back to our content view and then add the final section to our form, which is simply a navigation link pointing to that address view passing in the current order so we can modify it from there. And so we'll add one last section here. We'll say there's a section with a navigation link inside. It makes an address view with our current order being passed in. And actually I'll add here the label directly. Um, we'll just say delivery details like that, making a nice link button in our first screen. Press Command R so it works this time. It does. Um, I can browse through, add special requests, yada, 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 and then press this button here, to go to the next screen here. So at this point, we have the ability to create our order. Next on, we're gonna fill our address.